go for FTS arm. The flight termination system is now armed. Coming up at 4 minutes and 40 seconds, a big moment. This is where the RS-25 engines and their bleed go to high flow. It's been a little tricky to dial in. DLS, go for LH-2 high flow bleed check. Good work, we've passed that. The cryo team got the LH2 engine bleed pressure loop dialed in. They are now at the right temperature for launch. Countdown continues. T minus four minutes, 15 seconds. Up next, GLS fires up the KFUs. Those are high speed turbines which provide pressure to hydraulic pumps that steer the RS 25s. Stands for core stage auxiliary power unit start. GLS is good for core stage APU start. That now leads to the thrust vector control test at T minus two minutes and 30 seconds. That can proceed now, and we will see the engine's gimbal at the bottom of the core stage. At T minus three minutes and 10 seconds, you will hear the go for purge sequence four. That's a helium purge of the four core stage engines downstream of the propellant valve getting the air and moisture out. GLS is go for part sequence four. And in just a few seconds, GLS will close the core stage locks vent, liquid oxygen. The white vapor cloud caused from the super cold gaseous oxygen condensing the water in the atmosphere will disappear. You see it coming out there now. And there it goes, it's closed. Locks vent closed, pressure rising in the core stage locks tank to flight levels. Coming up in 15 seconds, look for that thrust vector control actuator test. Engines will gimbal. And there they go. The four core stage RS-25 engines gimbaling around, testing the ability to steer the rocket into space. They will operate at 109% performance. Each RS-25 throwing down a half million pounds of thrust. All four, two million pounds. All together with the boosters, 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. GLS is good for upper stage to internal power. Now the upper stage has gone to internal power. So power is removed from the rocket's upper stage, the ICPS, and it's been switched to battery power. The same milestone is coming up for the core stage at T minus one minute and 30 seconds. GLS, go for core stage to internal power. The rocket's core stage, which houses the three flight computers, is now on battery power. So there is no more hold time available because there's no more margin on the battery. So if we hold, have a hold, we'd have to recycle back to T minus 10 minutes and recharge those batteries. The count continues. A note now, shortly after liftoff. One minute. Shortly after liftoff, Mission Control Houston will take control of the rocket and my colleague, Leah Cheshire, will take over commentary. T minus 50 seconds and counting. Coming up at T minus 33 seconds, the GLS will hand off control to the ALS. This is the autonomous launch sequencer on board the rocket. It will take over command and control of the rocket. But the ALS will check, make sure there's no holds coming from the ground up until T minus GLS. Is go for ALS. And we are go for ALS. The space launch system is now counting down to lift off of Orion on its maiden voyage to the moon. Launch team can no longer recycle the count. Sound suppressor water now flowing under the ML. And here we go. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiate. Seven, six, five, five four, four, three, two, two, one.
Yes. Miles per hour, 46 miles downrange. 